can you run along a river and then use the the upstream and swim along the upstream in order to get back it was a question i asked myself now for many months because i sometimes run across not across but along a river this now uh, basically <laughs> meant that i was thinking about this but also then it eventually would try this so in order to now establish the kind of economics of all of this combined first of all one has to acknowledge i think that by choosing to travel back over the river and also being in the river one is choosing a different transportation speed compared to the one one has if one would just be running now the running speed let's just assume this is given you have an average average running speed that is the average running speed you would have if you just ran and then you cross the bridge eventually and then you ran back or you ran back at the same side now in terms of why is running across not across but along a river somewhat of an advantage because if you live in a city then it seems to be the case at least in my experience that the lights the traffic other people are constantly kind of stopping you or altering the route if you instead of stopping just change your route so this means if there is a light for example i often what i try to do is that i uh, ran run basically somewhere else where there is no light and so i well, I try to avoid basically the red lights, which then mean that I basically change my running route. While then running next to a river, one potentially has these long walks. Maybe it's a, it's a, it's a biking lane or it's something different. You also are more closer basically to nature as there are there is less traffic compared to the rest of the city. So this is kind of the reason why I chose to run, or choose again and again to run along a river now what i didn't really think of so first of all the, expe the expectations i had from this experiment the idea was the following i could run longer on one side and therefore also explore kind of new territory because i hadn't been there before at least not in terms of running and so i could run basically twice the distance and then i would it would take me some time which would also provide an additional workout because i would travel 10 to 20 minutes maybe back on the river I might, I also already considered that it might take a little bit longer, but I, I figured the river was fairly, was fairly, uh, was, fa was running on a fairly high uh, speed, so I would basically travel back on the river and just swim, swim a bit. So now usually I try to at least run 5 kilometers, on the max it's uh, 10 kilometers. I kind of run once weekly this route. Now I, instead of taking the bridge after two and a half to three kilometers i then just ran uh, more and more and then i actually got in the reason i did this not in the last couple of months was because it was winter and so there is also the problem of of body temperature that probably is dropping once you go into the river and the river is significantly uh, less warm than your body temperature is so therefore there also needs to be either a good cold exposure buffer so basically cold exposure training already having happened maybe over the last months and in my case years or uh, you just need to have a higher body temperature because you ate lots of food before or I don't know exactly so uh, it was kind of a early spring morning it was maybe 15 degrees Celsius outside and so I ran about 10 not not actually 10 i only ran i think five to six to seven kilometers and then after this i decided to then go into the river now once i was in the river first of all one has to acknowledge that a river is not just uh, something it's not just a tiny a tiny thing but there might be some serious risk with this involved especially if you then additionally have this cold exposure which comes on top of this so the one risk is that you might get caught up in the stream and then you might not make it out. There are other, also other risks involved, which actually then also, or which actually then for me also kind of became apparent as I then uh, basically swam down this river. In the beginning, I tried to implement the strategy which I had made up in my mind, which was to just swim a little bit along on this and basically use it already as regeneration. Now, I already from before kind of knew the following. If I, at some point uh, on, on the river, at least close to close to the shore, or I don't know what exactly it is called in terms of the river, but let's just say I'm swimming like 10 meters uh, close to wherever the river ends, then 
I could often uh, just barely hold basically the speed up with my swimming against the upstream current. Now what this means in terms of uh, Newton's, in terms of mechanics, uh, most, mostly Newton's mechanics, I don't know what the proper English word for this is, is that you can multiply, not multiply, but you can add and subtract basically the speeds. So if I swim upstream, uh, if I swim upstream, uh, I'll basically then my swimming speed is basically counteracting the upstream. Now if I swim downstream, and maybe I got this wrong in the beginning of the video, because I obviously want to travel downstream, so I want to swim downstream and I want to run upstream, because otherwise this doesn't work, you cannot really make it work the other way, because then you would have to swim, to swim upstream, which then you cannot really do, because in my experience, the river, on average at least, of course it, sh it, it varies a little bit depending on how much water the river carries, I cannot swim upstream against this. Now, and actually make progress in terms of in terms of my way and not just be at one point or even basically driven backwards by the river. So I knew already that I then would basically double my my speed, which in terms of swimming then resulted in less than I would have expected. So I don't know exactly how f fast I can swim, but what seemed to be the case, at least compared to other people that are walking basically or were walking, where that even then, after I realized that I was fairly slow and that it would take me basically mi at minimum the time I actually ran there to actually get back on the river swimming plus, so basically swimming downstream plus the downstream speed. And so I realized this and I actually began to swim then more intensely. And in terms of speed, I sometimes had somebody walking basically along the river and I was barely barely even with swimming then more intensely, basically at what I would consider at this point in time, also given that I already had ran a little bit, somewhat close to the speed I then was able to maintain for maybe 30 minutes. So not the highest speed, not the, my, my top speed, not my max speed, but something I would be able to maintain similar to running on a certain power level. And so the it was Basically, I was just a little bit faster than the average, uh, the average walking person that was next to the river, which in terms of me, then being in the river would mean that I would take, it would take me more time compared to running there. So I basically crossed uh, about two bridges and this was maybe, maybe two to four kilometers or three to five maybe on basically swimming on the river. What I then began to notice is that my body temperature, so I don't know exactly how warm the water was, but it was at least in my in my own definition of warm or not warm water, somewhat somewhat acceptable, I would say. It was not, uh, it didn't give me a cold shock in the beginning, but I'm also used to uh, diving in after a run, basically for 50 breath strokes, which is my usual routine also in winter runs, so this could mean that the water could also have 0 degrees Celsius, or maybe 5 degrees Celsius, or maybe 10 degrees Celsius, depending on the outside temperature, or on the outdoor temperature, and also the previous days before, and also how cold the night was, and so on, and so forth. So, after maybe 20 to 30 minutes of swimming in there, I noticed that my body temperature began to drop. Also, I have to mention maybe in terms of ships, there are ships that drive along this river, it's also a fairly big river, I would say, so um, maybe it's 50 meters, 60 meters broad on, on the broadest and maybe it's a little bit, maybe it could also be 100 meters sometimes from, from one end to the other. In terms of the location where I actually would swim, I would then try, because I was so slow, to basically go into the middle of the river and to basically seek the, the location in, in the river that had actually the highest speed. Because sometimes as the river goes along or with a curve or has a curve, then there are basically also a couple of streams that go backwards and so the, the, the speed might vary. But in general one maybe could assume that somewhere in the middle, or at least somewhere in the in the middle 25% or 50%, it is probably the highest speed, at least in this river in particular, and closer to the to the uh, to the sides of the river, there is less of a speed because there is probably more friction. And in the middle is also uh, more deeper or deeper. Actually, the river is actually not that deep, only kind of in the middle. I did not notice the ground, but I don't know um, how deep it actually was in the middle. Maybe I should look something like this up. But of course, there was also the risk involved. And there was also another risk involved, which I did not um, did not 
initially um, basically think about and this risk was that I would begin to cramp so now first of all this was already kind of a very good condition I actually thought about this already or thought that I would also do something like this already in winter but um, retrospectively it would have not been a good idea because well I would have then been wet of course I could get out again and this was also something that made this somewhat easier because as soon as I would get out within 10 to 20 minutes I probably would be warm again now I did swim and my body temperature began to drop at least as of my subjective sense of it of course I don't don't really have a sensor on me a part of Apart from the, the Garmin watch, which does have a sensor, so I could probably look up the temperature data on this watch and assume that my outer skin, not uh, that, and assume that the outer layer of my skin probably has a similar temperature to this. I actually don't know if the newer Garmin watches, such as this, the Garmin Phoenix 7S Pro, now measure skin temperature or if it is still device temperature, similar to the older Garmin watches, which I think just measure device temperature, so the temperature inside the Garmin device because the sensor was somewhere in there compared to the newer devices which I think measure skin temperature skin temperature now I after maybe 30 to 40 maybe 45 minutes I then basically within a couple of seconds actually decided I would get out because um, I already for maybe 10 to 15 minutes uh, noticed or noticed uh, my my basically lower jaw would already be shaking from from the from the cold exposure and so I was getting I was still doing fine I was also at multiple times trying to intervene trying to increase the intensity but it seemed to be the case that the water despite the water not being that cold just ex being exposed so long to the water would basically constantly draw um, heat energy away from my body as it is somewhat expected now this would be probably higher if I actually swam upstream as well because then if I swim downstream with the river then there is probably somewhat of a of a sphere of water around me and around my skin or layer and I'm swimming kind of along with the water whereas upstream there is a constant exchange of the water which also makes it somewhat harder in, in winter to kind of swim these 50 breath strokes upstream because the compared to getting in a cold plunge for example because the water is constantly carried away from you so the, the heat the body has to then provide to the outer layers of the body might basically be at a higher power level compared to just a cold plunge where then there is basically a layer of water around the skin which might be a little bit warmed up and then it's only once you basically shake your limbs again that this layer kind of breaks off and then allows you to do cold exposure more intensely again. So I decided to get out first of all out of the increasing increasing cold exposure draw on me the second thing was that i the day before actually trained my hamstrings i think which is what they are called so basically leg curls and i already had kind of some some lack of regeneration in there and I also since now about half a year have had cramps in specifically this area I don't know what exactly this is caused by maybe a magnesium deficiency but I'm taking a multivitamin and I also had to for a couple of weeks at least uh, be not on a multivitamin in order to uh, distinguish what variable would possibly lead to an increase in liver markers which I experienced in or tested at multiple points uh, during the last uh, three quarters of of the last year so the last revolving year not actually the last year so i within 10 to 20 seconds or maybe within 5 to 15 seconds i decided to now get out and because um the leg muscles uh, seem to again cramp more and more i already had changed my swim style multiple times uh doing kind of a back style but i noticed that in the back style so swimming like this mostly and then with the feet also it's kind of a made-up style i think there is no real word for it um i also experienced these these effects or these these cramps or noticed that i was kind of close to cramping and this would probably not be a very good scenario in the middle of a river now in terms of speed i probably was somewhere so my swim speed alone would maybe be one to three kilometers per hour i would assume it's probably not zero it's probably not five kilometers per hour it was at least if i take uh, the common the common known thing that walking is about five kilometers per hour and i say okay the river probably had two and a half kilometers per hour and i had two and a half because i swim 
swam as so I combined with the river was as fast as a as a person walking next next to the river also in the same direction so maybe two and a half kilometers per hour but I don't know in in how swim speeds are measured maybe per 100 meter or per 500 meter uh, I would have to look it up on my Garmin watch again now I decided to get out and what I then noticed is so I basically switched again to running which was actually not that possible um, or was actually also a constraint because my 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 legs were not that were not that regenerated and also my tendons especially I don't know if it's t the tendon or the ligament the Achilles tendon on one foot had made problems now for weeks and so I was not actually that sure if I could actually run back of course I could just walk back but it was quite a little bit of of kilometers to walk and I actually didn't want to spend that much time because I already had spent now an, an additional 40 minutes which weren't calculated because I had thought it would take me 10 or 20 minutes to get back basically the five kilometers I ran along this river so I got out and I was freezing and I also was in a very alert state due to the cold exposure and in addition uh, basically being already probably in a in a somewhat fasted state um, I had not eaten something before but what I refer to as a fasted state is now that I was depleted by basically of calories, probably also already burning fat. Also, in addition uh, to the activity, the cold exposure, I assume. So it had been now one and a half hours maybe, or one hour and something. And so I assume now that I was already kind of in a more fat burning state compared to the other state. So I ran back across along the river and I, I was also experiencing this thing where I now was first of all somewhat hyper aware you could say due to the due to the increased alertness but I also noticed how fast I actually had to move compared to the compared to the slow movements when swimming. So I eventually got back and so I don't really know what to make of this. I did not decide today as kind of a week after to do again a run like this. But in theory at least it seems like a very nice concept that you that you basically can double the the distance in which which you can run into one direction at least if there's a river uh, where you can actually swim back then but this probably has to be in summer or the cold exposure training has to be even more or even better at least in in this state as of the last sunday i was not able to sustain basically the whole distance back and so i got uh, got out of the water maybe 50% of the distance, so after two and a half kilometers or maybe after three kilometers and ran the rest back.